Ryan and them roll over in their grave. Sure. One no more. Yeah. Praise God. St. John chapter 19, verse 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus they, and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs, but one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Say with me, blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, that's John, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he's, he saith true that you might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture says they shall look on him whom they pierced. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word and Holy Spirit without you. There is no need to even try to expound or explain. So we ask you to give illumination to us so that we can understand what you would say at this time. Bless everyone who hears. Praise God for our friends and guests, our family. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to also give honor to my wife, the First Lady, amen. Praise the Lord. Those of you who don't know us, the one in the pink. Amen. Oh, praise God. God bless you. Uh, I'm going to talk. We've heard about the Passover. We've heard great things that I, I, I can't even begin to do justice to because the information was so powerful and so thorough. Uh, the Passover, the lamb of the blood, uh, we just took a blood shower, like, uh, I believe it was Pastor Lee said to somebody, was that you said we need to take a blood shower? Yeah. I think somebody, you said that last night, didn't you? He was speaking in the, in the realm of blood shower, and uh, man, I don't know, you just, some, sometimes you just got to hear what God is saying through, and uh, I think that's why some of these people left home, I left here kind of, had had too much to drink. <laughs> Dale City Police was somewhere else because he just showed arrested some of these people. <laughs> Those of you who read your Bible know that in the book of Acts it says, these men are drunken. And it ain't but 9 o'clock in the day. You know, you know you got a bad <laughs> habit when you're drunk at 9 o'clock in the day. Well, it wasn't 9 o'clock. It was about 9 at night. But they was... They had had a blood bath, and that's what the blood will do. It'll, it'll, it'll make you say things and do things. So I don't want to tarry, but thank God for the blood. But I, w I want to talk to us from this scripture about Jesus being pierced in his side. And as he was pierced in his side, the Bible says, <clears throat> water and blood, a blood and water came out. He was pierced in his side. Blood and water came out. And why I feel like it's relevant to this time, because we talk about the blood, but some people don't really understand what we mean by the blood, you know. It's, we use it. And we really don't get it sometimes, and some of us get it. But you will never finish searching the depth of the wisdom of God. His ways are unsearchable. And through this blood covenant that he has with us, it brings to us, you, can, you can't exhaust it, this blood. And so... 
I am going to be ministering to us about the covenant. I won't talk about the marriage. The marriage of the Son of God with his church. That's what I want to talk about. The marriage. Because we could shout about the fact that he came on Christmas. But he, was, he grew to be 33 years of age. It's not enough to shout about Christmas. And as I said, when Easter comes, people are not as celebratory. We don't spend as much money. But I think we ought to spend more money at Christmas than we do on Easter. It's just me. On Easter, thank you, dear. More money on Easter than we do on Christmas. Christmas, we go to all the stores for their clothes. We go to the Black Friday because we're getting ready for Christmas. We spend our money. We overspend. Come on. Don't make me preach. You better hurry up and say amen. We overspend. We max out our credit cards and our bank cards. We can't forget not one of our kids or grandkids. Oh, don't forget Mondre. Oh, don't forget Asia. And if you get something for Regina, you can say, well, since you got something for Regina, you got to get something for Takari. And you just go reckless. Hello, come on. Can I get a better amen? amen. You in the grocery stores, you're buying your ham. You're buying your chicken. You're buying your chitlins. Amen. You're cooking all night. You, you, your feet hurt, you're tired, but you're still stirring the pot because it's Christmas dinner and there ain't no way you're going to lay in the bed. Is that right? You put everything into Christmas, the birth of Jesus, so-called, and we can talk about whether he was born then or not, but that's not for this time. But come Easter, all we got is an egg and a rabbit. And really kind of one day. But Easter is the big deal. Are you listening? It's the big deal. Birthday, nah, thank you. Because most of us ain't going to hear what a kid got to say. But this grown man gave his life. And we need to hear you him. So I'm for Easter. I get excited Easter. I don't want to go into Easter when I was a kid, but you remember speeches. I heard somebody say, you know, I, remember, I got pictures of Roxanne now doing this, you know, and the boys, we used to do that. Didn't we? Didn't we? When you got done, you did that. You had your speech. Didn't you have a speech? They bought you new clothes, too. Man, they go broke buying new clothes back in. How many remember that? Come on, help me here, huh? Got to get a new dress. Got to get a new suit. New clothes. Even if you didn't wear suits and ties, mama bought you new tennis shoes. You had new stuff on. Easter was about being new. But it's changed now. And so I bring to you, well, I pray just to understanding that Easter has an even bigger meaning than we have relegated it to. So we had the baby, then we had the baby to grow up to become a grown man, and he died on Easter for our sins. He paid the price. Y'all with me? But what's the rest of the story? He rose, yeah. But the story even goes beyond him rising. And that's what the enemy wants to do, keep us stuck on, on, the, on the tradition of what we call holidays, not holy days. But he rose, yeah. But that doesn't mean anything, according to what the preacher was saying last night. It's okay, I'm glad he rose. But that doesn't work for you if you don't use that on a daily basis. When you get sick, and sometimes we do. When you get frustrated, when your, your money is, is, is gone, when people talk about you, you, you can't 
Well, the, he's a baby in a manger. That baby didn't, didn't say enough. He died on the cross. And evidently that wasn't good enough or all God had because he sent us the epistles and kept writing stuff for us to understand what was accomplished at this death. So it's more than he forgave me of my sin. That's good. But that ain't all of it. He forgave me of my sin. That's good. But he also gave me power or gave me an access to power, spiritual power, wisdom. You're going to need it, which is to know what to do. I don't know what to do when my child is in trouble and I can't pull him out. I don't know what to do when my family is hurting. I don't know what to do when the doctor is saying, that uh, we can't help you. I don't know what to do with this kind of cancer. I don't know what to do with this kind of mental disorder. This thyroid issue. This glandular problem. They don't know what to do. Doctors don't heal. They practice medicine. I don't know what to do on those days that I feel like I can't walk. Used to run and jump, but I have days where I feel like I can't walk from here to there. I don't know. So that baby can't do nothing for me. And yes, he died on the cross, but we can just dance around the pole. He died on the cross. Okay, so what? He died on the cross. So what? People dying down in McAllister. People dying right here in your city. So his death doesn't profit me and you anything. If we don't come to understand the consummation of it or the bring the thing full circle. Why you die for me? Just so that I can not sin on Monday and Friday look good. So I'm going to sin on Friday. That's a lot of people's mentality. He died for me, my sin. So I get a pass. For something I love to do that he hates. So he died for me. So I can keep lying. Come on. Say amen. Help me here. I'm just saying, I'm going to focus on him. So he died for me so I can stay sick. He died for me so I can die every time death knock at my door. Death knocks at the door of people. That don't make you weak. It makes you relevant. So he died for me. So if I get a disease, goodbye, Steve. He didn't die so that when the enemy come at me, that I can't survive. He died for me so I can stay broke all the time. Hustling, stealing. But I'm hollering about he died for me. Well, I don't need him to die for me. He died for nothing. For a whole lot of us that say we are Christian. He died for nothing. Because we're discouraged, we're despondent, we're giving up, we're angry, we're bitter, we're afraid. And God forbid the doctor should say, make a mistake and read the report and say, you got this, this, that, and that. We believe that report more than we would believe the report of the cross. Oh, quack time, doctor. Just tell you something to get your money. Giving you a placebo, sugar pill. He died so that we could eat from the tree of life. You hear me? I said he died. Read the end of the book. He didn't just die for my sin. Because the way we do, he's going to have to die some more. He ain't just died for my sin. Because the way we, we enjoy sin, he need to come on and get back on the cross. Because you, we love some sin. Love it, love it, love it. Want two slices of it. Brush your teeth with it. Go to bed with it on your mind. Wake up. Can I go sin? Who wants to sin with me? 
All my friends love sin. As folk that don't like sin ain't got nothing to do with it. I want to hang with some sinners. So he needs to, something's wrong there. There's a disconnect. Come on, help me here. There's a disconnect. He died for sin. He died for my sin. Well, he's probably saying, well, praise the Lord. You, 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 you doing your job. We interpret that he died so I can keep sinning. He died so when I sin and I don't feel good about my sin, I can just go to him and say, I'm feeling bad about what I said, what I did. But uh, hey, player, tomorrow I'll be right back on it. We treat it as though he died for my sin because he loved me so much. He said, well, I know you can't help but sin. Just keep sinning. But I died for your sin. So at the end, God won't throw you to hell. But just keep on sinning because I love you so much. I died so you can keep on sinning and keep on being an unbeliever. I died for your unbelief. But so you keep on not loving me, not honoring me, not putting me first. Because, you know, I'm that kind of God. I died for you so you can have habits that you can't break. I died for you so you can make big old mistakes and you can keep doing them. That's the gospel that's in the earth, but that ain't the true gospel. That ain't the true gospel. It starts in the book of Genesis. And if you go back to the book of Genesis, dealing with Adam and Eve, I won't take you to the scripture because you know it. But the Bible says that God put Adam to sleep. And when he put Adam to sleep, he pulled a rib out of Adam and he made a woman and her name is Eve. How many heard that story? It started in the beginning. They had a right to the tree of life that was in the garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. God's original plan was that man would have dominion. Meaning he would boss earth like God bossed heaven. And so he planted a man and woman in the garden and planted trees and one tree. But one of the trees was the tree of life. They could have... Really, if you think about it, while they was on a stroll, they could have ate from the tree of life. They could instead of eating bananas, eating grapes, or whatever trees they was eating from. Because the Lord had told them there's a tree of life and there's another tree. I don't want you to mess with that tree. It's the tree of good and evil. Life is about eating from trees. Life is about eating from trees. It's about eating. It's about consuming. When you boil it all down, the tree of knowledge, the tree of good and evil, the tree of homosexuality, the tree of adultery, fornication, the tree of lust, the tree of murder. There ain't nothing but trees. The tree of lying, the tree of stealing. Life ain't nothing but strolling and eating from trees. When you was a teenager, you start eating from the tree of sex. Yeah, let me pull down. Let me. So a kiss is, is how we get this going. Then you start looking for somebody to kiss you. Or somebody you could kiss. You're eating from the tree of sex. Then you grow. You start eating from the tree of finance, money. I need a job. Or the tree of having a place to stay. I'm going to stay in an apartment. Stay with my mom and them. I'm going to put some money up and buy my own place. Uh, let me get, how, how can I have the, the, the fruit from the top of the tree? Okay, I got to get a better job. I got to save my money. Life is nothing else than eating from trees. You get married. You're eating from a tree. I'm going to pluck a, pluck a fruit from a good place or pluck some rotten fruit over here. Or I'm going to eat the fruit that's on the ground that's rotting. Life is about eating from trees. There ain't nothing new under the sun. And when the Lord planted Adam and Eve in the garden, he told them, y'all take care of the garden and eat from the trees. But don't eat from the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. The tree of life was also in the garden. I'm jumping ahead, but if you go to the book of Revelation in the end, the tree of life is in 
the book of Revelation. The original intent of God is going to happen. Yeah. And that was to have a man and a woman. Yeah. To have, have a man and to have a bride that was going to rule the earth. Oh, I feel my help right here. The original intent of God was that I got a man to till the garden and he got a bride that going to help him rule. That was the original intent of God. Satan messed it up. Amen. Amen. If you look at the end of the book, that's what God's original intent is. All this other stuff we want, we need, we think we got to have, forsake God. I don't need God. I'm too busy for God. You know, God get to come see me when he get ready. All that stuff is coming from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the tree where the enemy keeps telling you, eat from this tree. Eat from this tree to say, I don't have to love God with all my heart. It's okay because I'm young, gifted, and black to do this. It's okay because I'm rich and white to do that. It's okay because I never had nothing as a kid. So it's okay for me to lust and want something. That is nothing but the tree that the enemy plants in your life. Every day when you get up, bruh, you got to eat from some tree. Bitterness. Hey, come on, help me here. The tree of bitterness. Tree of discouragement. Got a whole lot of goodies on it. The tree of I'm sad today. You could eat from the tree of joy, but no, you you just mosey on over to the tree of sadness and get you a bite of fruit. Then when you speak to everybody, you growl it. You can eat from the tree of anger, murder, dysfunction. Hello. But he has planted the tree of life. And he plants the tree of life so that you can eat from it eternally. Not just on Friday and payday when the eagle flying. Not just because everybody talking good. You're supposed to, right now, we can change, we can change our de de destiny and direction right now by deciding I'm not eating from the tree of bitterness today. I'm not eating. I'm going to take these feet and I'm going to the tree of joy. The tree, you make that decision. Just like Adam and Eve did not Nobody pull him over there. The devil didn't make him do nothing. He simply did what he do to you and me on a daily basis. I suggest you eat from the tree of discouragement today. Before we have breakfast, eggs, and bacon, cereal, we already biting into the fruit. Juice running down our elbow. Because we made a decision. Money ain't got nothing to do with it. Housing ain't got nothing to do with it. Friends ain't got nothing to do with it. It's a decision between us and God. You are Adam and you are Eve. I'm Adam. You Eve. Same old plan. We all talking about what Adam should have done. You do it, man. Woman, you ever talking about what Eve should You do it. Because I'm Adam. And if you're a female, you Eve. There ain't no new plan. As far as God's concerned, you're the only person in the world. And he's watching you in his garden, which is called earth. And he watches to see what you're going to do. You got to make the choice. More, more bitter trees over here today. But guess what? I'm going to make these bones. If I got to crawl, I'm getting over here to the tree of peace. If I got to get the low-hanging fruit, I'm eating from peace today. And the reason I can do so, because he wanted me to eat from the tree of life forever. And I will walk away from you. If all you do it here, eat, 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 from, eat from this fruit. Eat this fruit. Eat this fruit. Here, eat this fruit. Eat this fruit. Here, you eat this. Here, this is this, this how I am. That's a, this how I am. You gotta, you gotta love me or like me. Cause this how I am. That's how that's what I got. That's what the Lord told me. I ain't got to eat that. I don't need friends like that. I don't care who they are and how popular they are. But if I go to see you and all you got for me is bitter fruit, Come on. 
It doesn't even matter in the case of Adam and Eve. When Adam came to Eve, she offered him bitter fruit. He should have said, what are you doing? You can eat it all you want to, baby, with your big hips, pretty lips, and your fingertips. But guess what? He told me, and I told you, that's how you know. He didn't tell you. He told me, and I told you, don't eat from that tree. Ain't got nothing to do with equality. And my mistake is letting you make me eat or taking what you, you offered me. But he told me and I told you. Because we like to read the story, Adam and Eve, Eve took the fruit. And they said, but hey, there was a disconnect. Stay with me here. And the disconnect was Adam failed to make it plain, communicate with her. And we've been trying to communicate with one another ever since. That's all right, you young, young pretty ladies trying to find a man and young men are trying to find women. It's more than just getting together. It's about a communication. 